Yes, that is what the Nothing Phone can do. And I have to say though, for a device that started and a company that started last year, they've really taken the next step. Hi guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my review, comparison, and total look at the Nothing Phone 2 versus the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And you're going, wait, Thunder E, why are we comparing the Nothing Phone 2 to a high-end device? Well, it's because Nothing is offering something that we used to cherish with the OnePlus devices back in the day, and I think Kyle Pei has done something here really impressive. Now this device packs in a ton of features and is one that would be truly amazing starting off with its price point. Starting at $599, yes, you heard that right, $599 all the way to $799. Uh, you've got a SKU from 128 gigabytes to 512, eight gigabytes of RAM, powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. That was a very good chipset last year. So don't let that fool you thinking it's not an 8 Gen 2. Okay, so, why am I comparing this against the Galaxy S23 Ultra? Well, they're two very different devices in size and style. This is 6.7 inches. Galaxy, of course, is larger. The Galaxy also is priced higher at $1,199. You, you know the deal there. But let's look at the Nothing. The design-wise is, is very similar to the first Nothing phone. We didn't review it, but we did get it a little bit late. I do like that clear aesthetic look where you can see, you know, it, almost like you know the innards of the device. The curved glass on the edge is pretty nice. And of course, you've got the glyph lighting at the back. That's the first thing that just truly stands out on the device. It looks absolutely gorgeous and can be used as a flashlight as well. Now you've got two um, cameras at the back. They're both 50 megapixels wide and ultra wide. Uh, and the front facing camera is 32 megapixels. The display itself is truly impressive, but also the OS that runs on there, the Nothing OS 2 does so much more. You do have something that gives you this very minimalistic look, but also a lot of information and something very unique. Now I do have a wallpaper here, Miles Morales. You guys have a link for you in the description. But there's so much more to what they've done with the OS and the widgets that I haven't seen from any Android device. So you've got widgets where you can customize the widgets to look and feel differently or even put specific icons or say like my games widgets. You've got more functionality in the widgets where you can do more directly uh, and also see more information like the weather widgets here, which is pretty nice showing me wind speeds, air quality, you know, all the fires from Canada, all that fun stuff. So there's really more into what this software can do. It pairs well with the Nothing uh, Buds 2, which of course are really good in terms of audio quality. But what I do like about it is that it's just very simple and straight to the point. Okay, so let's get down to the heart of the matter with the cameras and comparisons. You've got two very different devices here and I wanna take a look at what those cameras bring to the table. The Nothing Camera OS is very simple and straightforward. The Galaxy also is simple, but has a ton of features. So let's see what those cameras actually do side by side. So here's the front facing camera of both devices. And yes, I'm recording at 1080 60 because the Nothing Phone 2 does 1080 60 as its max resolution, which is a bit sad. And of course we know the Galaxy goes all the way up to 4K 60 uh, for the front facing camera. But let's look at stabilization, color, balance, all that fun jazz. And let's see how it actually works. Now for quick reference, this is 4K 60 versus 1080p 60. So you get a good idea of what you're getting from either one. And again, uh, this should be quite interesting. And let's move on to some images.
Hmm, that was quite interesting. Now, the Galaxy does, of course, excel well in video, but the Nothing's photos are really good. I will mention, though, there's a lot of lens flare you saw in the Galaxy, uh, and that's something that came about from the latest OS update. So, hey, that's what I got from the latest OS update. So, take it as you will. But what do you guys think? Who actually won the photo battle here from both devices? Now, when we move over to speakers, how well do the speakers sound? And then we transition into gaming. Not bad speakers from nothing. They've done a good job there. I think the Galaxy is still louder and clearer. Now, I'm not gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to gaming performance. We know the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is better than the 8 Plus Gen 1, but still, what does a nothing phone 2 do in terms of gaming? Playing Call of Duty Mobile, we can do the max uh, settings and do 90 frames per second on there. And also, you can clearly see it's got a gaming dashboard. It's boring taking that, of course, from something we've seen on Pixel phones. And that is awesome to see that implementation there. That's something that Samsung doesn't have out of the box you can download, but I like that nothing has that. So I don't have to use an external benchmark tool. Also, PUBG Mobile works really well, whether you're playing on um, extreme HDR, getting 60 frames per second there, and very smooth gameplay, or you're doing Ultra HD Ultra and getting 40 frames per second. Now, Genshin Impact is where you see some falter on here. Now, this is not a gaming device and nothing really hasn't spoken about how cooling is, but it starts off at 60 frames per second, roughly going about five minutes into gameplay, it drops down to about 52. And then it varied between 46 to 52 frames per second for duration of the gameplay period, roughly around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So you're getting that kind of performance there. Still good, better than other devices out there and very solid overall. Now, in terms of temperatures, you're looking at some really good temperatures on this device. It doesn't really overheat as much. Uh, it does like 107 degrees, uh, which is still fine, especially for any flagship Android device. And you also have some really good battery life. This is where the device really excels. The 4700 milliamp battery does a fantastic job and the standby mode on this is truly impressive. Probably the best I have seen this year from any device and even any device from last year. So when you're using this phone, battery life will be great and consistently solid for you. Now, the software adds a lot of features into this, but one thing I wanna focus on is the glyphs. As you saw at the very beginning of this video where you saw those that, that composition of sound, you've got a glyph composer that you can compose different quick ringtones, whichever way you want to. It's pretty easy to set up and record and you can make whatever sounds you like. But the fact that you can use those glyphs any way you want, especially for notifications and specific notifications. So I can get glyphs for notifications directly for a chat group or even for my Uber or for any app that I pick and choose in there, that really works well. You can also use the glyph lighting for a volume uh, indicator, as well as also your charging meter when you're charging your device. And then simple things like the timer as well. So there are a lot of new features that have been added to this to make this more robust and not just some lighting effect that you have there, but something that you can actually use, especially the timer. Imagine if you're doing sets in the gym and you want something visual, but you don't want to have the clock going on. You can have a timer set, you place it down in front of you and it basically counts down to whatever time you don't want. But it's 15 seconds, 30 seconds, that's pretty cool. So there are a lot of cool features on this device. 
Now I have to say though, I have been really impressed with what they have done with the Nothing Phone 2. I think it is truly impressive. I like the features and I have been just ecstatic by using this phone. It's been a while to, uh, that I've gotten this excited about a candy bar phone. Usually it's foldable, so something unique or different. This just gets straight to the point and works really well. Plus the price point is very exciting, meaning that you can buy something that is close to flagship, that has flagship features, including things like wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, um, on there as well. So you have those features built in that you can definitely take full advantage of. So guys, what do you think about the Nothing Phone 2? Do you think it stacks up to a flagship like the Galaxy S23 Ultra? Or do you think it's close, uh, but not close enough? Leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.